Hi, welcome. I'm Dr. Trish Lee. I'd like to take just a minute to explain to you how you can interpret your QEEG brain map after you have the results. So across the top are listed the five main brain speeds that we will be covering with you when you visit us at Lee Brain and Spine. They are called Delta, Theta, Alpha, Beta, and High Beta. And just to remind you, if you've seen other videos of mine, that those five brain speeds create the states that you want to get into within and across your days based upon circadian rhythms. So Delta helps us to fall asleep and to stay in restorative sleep. Theta helps us feel groggy and shift into sleep. Alpha medium speed helps us to feel calm and relaxed. Beta helps us to be able to focus and to think it's fast speed. Extra fast high beta helps us to deal with stressful situations. That is what it looks like if our brain is using speed optimally here in this example map. When we see colors on the map and you can see the legend, when we see yellow, orange, red, that means that your brain is using one to two to three levels too high of that speed. When we see the blues, it means that your brain is using one to three levels too low of that speed. The top row of heads there is absolute power. Basically, that's how charged up your brain is with that speed overall. Relative power is relative to all the other speeds, which speed is being used the most, which speed is being used the least. The three parameters at the bottom, and you can see this is a close to optimal map. There's hardly any lines. These three parameters of amplitude, asymmetry, coherence, and phase lag are parameters of communication between brain areas. So a way to think of it is that our brains use networks. And an analogy I like to use is that if you were to make a cell phone call right now, you have to transmit and bounce that reception of that call off of multiple cell phone towers for your call to reach its destination. Our brain works that way in terms of how communication is happening between brain areas. Each one of those little dots represents an area of the brain. And let me show you how. It's using an international system called the 1020 system. And so you can see that this head looks very similar to the heads that we see on the brain map. So you can see the nose is at the top, the ears at the side, and the back of the head is towards the bottom of the screen. What the 1020 system shows us is how every area of your brain is using speed. So when we see the areas that are labeled with F, those are frontal areas. The areas that are labeled with C are the central areas. T are called temporal, and in the back are the posterior regions, and they are called the parietal lobe. Even further back, the O's are the occipital lobe. And what it means is each one of these lobes has different jobs or skills or abilities that they are in control of. So for example, this area here, F3, near FP1 is for attention. The area in the middle, FZ, is for executive function, planning and organization. Over here, F4 is for impulse control and judgment. Across the central areas are the sensory motor cortex. In the parietal lobe, we have true cognitive processing, verbal on the left, mathematical towards the right. The occipital lobe is for visual processing, and what most people don't know is that that is a hub of many neural connections that are far-reaching all the way to the frontal lobe. The temporal lobes are for auditory processing, and they're also strong emotional regulation areas. This example is just from Wikipedia, and I did it on purpose so that if you'd like to learn more, you can just Look it up on Wikipedia, you'll see this exact example with a lengthy description for you, and you'll be able to get a sense of the jobs and the skills and abilities that it controls. So here again, we have our optimal brain map. This is an example of an ADHD brain map, just so you can get a sense 
of what a brain map that's using an irregular pattern might look like. So here you can see that this brain map is using the biomarker for ADHD, which is excessive theta. So remembering that red is three times too much theta. Blue is three times too little beta. And if you remember, the biomarker for ADD is a three to one theta to beta, theta to beta ratio. Say that 10 times fast. So the idea is there's three times too much of theta and three times too low of beta. And of course, this is just an example, but it shows you that that gap between theta and beta is large. And remembering absolute power shows how much it's being used overall. And relative power, you can see that theta is being used the most. It has red relative to all the other speeds and beta is being used the least. So what that means is when the brain is using too much slow speed, it's difficult to attend, to focus, to produce. And especially when it's also using three levels too low of thinking speed, those skills can deteriorate quickly. Just to remind you too, here we see more lines in the communication showing where that is showing deficiencies. Okay, so I, help, I hope that helps you understand how you can interpret your map when you get home. Uh, so that you can look at it and remember what it means for you because our goal is to help you change the way that your brain is performing so we can improve your life. When you feel and perform better, your mind works better, your body works better, and everything works better to improve your quality of life. Okay, so I hope that helps. Go check your brain map out. Thanks.